People always say that the UK's culture is downstream from America. Our food, we've got McDonald's over here now, even Popeyes, our fashion trends, our music. But finally, it seems that we've got a trend that started by England. What's this? Lily Phillips, England's biggest slag, 101 men in one day. Oh. For fuck's sake, there's been a trend that's evolved over the last year since X went from being way too restricted by the previous owners to now being pretty much a glorified Pornhub site. And that is OnlyFans girls pushing the limits more and more doing anything to sell their products. I initially wasn't going to make a video about this. I saw the whole Lily Phillips sleeping with 101 men in one day thing. And if you've seen my Battle of Ideas speech, which you can watch here after this video, or if you just know me as a person or my content style, I really try and stray away from making clickbaity stuff that just fuels a culture war or fuels people's attention spans getting even shorter. And I try to provide genuine value. So I was very skeptical to hone in on this because ultimately a lot of these girls that do OnlyFans and boys are just rage baiters. They want a reaction like this, a video that says their name like I'm doing to get even more clicks from horny, vulnerable individuals. So I didn't want to feed the beast, but then I saw something wild. And that was a girl named Bonnie Blue who said this. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be sleeping with 23 barely legal 18 year olds. And that pushed me to the edge of just feeling my internal compass spinning in the wrong direction and knowing that something was wrong and I had to make a video addressing this. You might know me as the girl who has been run through by 101 guys all in one day. Now here's a little part where he's talking about the logistics of things. This one is for the uni students. I'm gonna be back in the UK this September and I'm gonna be heading to Derby and Nottingham University for Freshers Week. Oh. Hi. Hey, you okay? Who's going first then? Me, 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 me. Do you want to spend two minutes with me alone or double it and pass it to the next person? So do you want to be nice to your family and give them longer with me or are you going to be selfish and do two minutes? Selfish. selfish. I'm you selfish. selfish? Yeah. And what would you do to me in two minutes? Tell me. I feel so bad for these guys who are clearly vulnerable, not in control of their urges and excited to explore, queuing up all together outside in the winter cold to have sex with this incredibly attractive, don't get me wrong, lady for two minutes and then get kicked out and interviewed. I mean, doing the whole two minutes thing is enough, but getting pulled over for a Vox Pop afterwards <laughs> is just taking the piss. If one of my best mates, whether they're a boy or girl, said to me that they'd queued up for eight hours to have sex with someone for two minutes in the freezing cold, I would be seriously concerned for their mental state and tell them that I'm there for them because clearly something's wrong. I mean, just imagine being the last one of the day. Unlucky, mate. I'm very much coming at this just from a moral perspective of it being so twisted that these confident individuals are pretty much exploiting young and horny kids that are barely legal for their profit. And I'm not trying to skew this in a way that typical manosphere people would do of calling these women slags or whores because I think that's just an easy way of someone expressing their anger, name calling, and it's not productive for anything. So that's not what I'm looking to do. But what's interesting is that I was looking for guys that had done this with girls queuing up for them for eight hours. I couldn't find any. And I think that's very indicative of the fact that if a guy did the same thing, they would probably get cancelled immediately. Whereas as soon as it's a girl, it's okay for them to post that they're looking to fuck barely legal individuals. Imagine a guy said this, I'm looking to meet up with barely legal individuals. They would literally be cancelled like that. I guess to be fair, someone like Andrew Tate has alluded to that in the past and he didn't get taken down until now by the Romanian authorities, but he's a fucking creep and I think people are waking up to that. So maybe that does prove my point. Ironically as well, I think the reason why these confident girls who are clearly just selfish, looking for money, are able to exploit these young probably many of them like incels and get away with it without it being outrageous and them getting fucking posted about by people calling them out for what they're doing, which is playing on the hormones and intense reactions from people that are deprived of any real connection is actually because of the alpha males you see in the manosphere using fucking stupid regurgitated sayings like, if a lock can be opened by any key, it's a bad lock, but if a key can open any lock, it's a master key to fucking try and put some inspirational tone 
on justifying men sleeping with loads of girls and that being impressive. Whereas if a girl isn't a virgin when they sleep with them, then she's a whore. Like the mental gymnastics on that one is a bit wild to basically just justify a bunch of men that want to be influencers driving Bugattis, sleeping with as many people as possible because they can't control their impulses. We have got <laughs> countless guys lined up ready to mm -hmm. us. Um, oh. <laughs> oh. oh, how many shoes are you guys counting? Wait, well, these are all the guys. There's more in there as well. I'm fucking disgusted by these individuals who are older exploiting young men that aren't mature enough to make these decisions and know that they won't regret them. Just look at all these people queuing up in their socks and shoes, waiting to have their turn. It's, uh, it's concerning. Are you going to destroy me? Jeez. I think we should put it to the test. Yeah, Are you ready? I'm ready. Do you have your ID with you? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go! <laughs> Do you recommend me to a friend? 100 million percent. And what about to all your family members that are queuing out there? Everybody, it's worth it. Yeah. It's worth the wait. You're extremely worth the wait. You're sexy as well. <laughs> the way this guy is stuttering and spewing out random words, you can just tell that he's not had very much experience in this field. And uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is the exposure therapy he needed to gain confidence to approach more women in the future. And Bonnie Blue is doing the world a favor and the depopulation crisis by inspiring young men to have confidence in approaching women. I don't think so, though. <laughs> Did you manage to destroy me, though, in those two minutes? Not in the two minutes, but if I had longer with you, you'd get destroyed. Exactly. He's going to come back and go again. 100%. <laughs> Bro's shifting the goalpost already. He said he was going to destroy her. He didn't. And then now he said, if I had longer than two minutes, I would have destroyed you. Come on, bro. Just accept the L. It's a funny thought to think that these guys are just walking the streets of the UK and there's becoming an ever-increasing number of them that have engaged in this <laughs> activity. So that could have been your barber, your left back on your football team, or maybe someone's brother. I, I'll take these two and then you three, okay? So do you want to spend two minutes with me alone or double it and pass it to the next group? Obviously two minutes alone. <laughs> okay, perfect. And what are you going to do in that two minutes? You don't want to know. You'll find out up there. Okay, are we going to have some fun? More than fun. Okay, perfect. More than fun. <laughs> do you want to fuck me for two minutes? When you go black, you never go back. Oh, oh go on, You white boys need to get out of this queue then. <laughs> Have fun. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah? Did I suck your well? Could be better next time. <gasps> could be better? How could it be better? Longer session, two hours. Longer session. This reminds me of those videos when people do interviews with shy little kids and they're sort of guiding them towards the right answer because they don't know what to say. And man, honestly, like, I'm actually baffled watching these videos. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these guys are autistic, have been locked in their bedrooms watching probably these guys on OnlyFans, and now they're jumping at the opportunity to do something in real life. It's, it's super sad, and I, I really like pray that they don't regret it, but the chances are that they probably will. Or even if they don't consciously regret it, I think it gives them a very warped idea of what sex is. Fucking hell, I'll see you guys here for Bonnie Blue then. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, what number is it? Um, oh, fucking hell, I'm last. Boys, he's just come. Oh, yeah, I'm going in! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Dad? What the fuck are you doing there? Okay, you might be thinking, Elliot, you're overreacting. This is a one off case. Lily Phillips slept with 101 men. Bonnie slept with however many, and they're done. They've gotten their views. But this is when things get a bit dark. There's. Now, a ticketed event, don't ask me how I found this, but Lily Phillips is in central London on the 3rd of November, and here is what it says about the event. Prepare for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to part... <laughs> Prepare for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to participate in the hottest cream pie gangbang with the industry's rising star, Lily Phillips. This exclusive event set in a luxurious venue just off Oxford Street offers an intimate and rare chance to take part in an unforgettable experience plus a special bonus listed at the end. Not only will you join the cream pie gangbang, but your ticket also includes access to the blissful boudoir bukage right after, ensuring an incredible two-in-one party experience. I think there's going to be a lot more than two-in-one this night. Fucking hell. Main event. At 5pm, the cream pie gangbang... Look, I'm glad they've got their logistics down. Like, this seems very well organised. 
Look, they've even got an arrival time 15 minutes early. If you're not early, you're late. At 5 p.m., the cream pie gangbang with Lily Phillips will kick off, lasting 45 minutes to an hour. Following the main event at 6 p.m. sharp, the blissful boudoir bukake will commence, providing you with the perfect follow-up to an evening of indulgence. Unlucky if you're the first guy, you finish early and then you have to sit in the cuck chair for an hour. Here we go. Filming notice. The event will be professionally filmed. If you wish to remain anonymous, we highly encourage the use of masks. The special bonus. Everyone who buys a ticket to this incredible event will get a free ticket to Lily's attempt at the world record for the most amount of guys fucked in one day. She wants a thousand. <sighs> Part of this is funny until you realize that it's actually happening and there are hundreds of men signing up to this. Let's see how much a ticket costs. Book event. Oh my god, 150 pounds. A hundred. I know what I'm getting my best mate for his birthday. Oh my god, that's not including the payment charge and the booking fee. 158 pounds 10. Look, I was gonna do it for 150 pounds, but 158 pounds 10 pence is taking the piss a little bit. Is this even legal? I literally have no idea. I don't want this video to come across as me pushing any direct message other than just reacting to something that is obviously heinous. Like, <laughs> I think that this shit is absolutely disgusting and I'm so happy to be proven wrong. Like, I'm open to having anyone on my podcast that's going to tell me why these events are okay. My intuition just feels off with this and to me, this is disgusting and just exploiting people. But I'm pushing actively to get on a podcast with someone talking about sex work and why it's work. I'm getting people to talk about like BDSM and kinks and why it's good to be a dominatrix. So stay tuned for that. Like I'm completely open to have my perspective shifted. To me, this just feels like selfish individuals trying to make a name for themselves when they're really just narcissists. And the sad thing is I'd forecast the death of 99% of the porn industry within the next 30 years, either because my content wins over and I get people to stop jizzing their dopamine away into their belly buttons or because AI replaces all these male and female influencers anyway on OnlyFans. Think about it, if you have developed enough AI, you could get rid of all these minor imperfections that humans have and get the perfect scientific hip to waist ratio that will turn on men the most or get the perfect shaped bell end that looks like the lighthouse of Alexandria or something. I don't know, whatever's fucking anat <laughs> no, whatever's anatomically best. And at that point, people like Bonnie and Lily will be left for dead and really struggle to get any other proper careers in their life, which is super sad. I mean, these guys have made a killing and I'm sure they'll be set for the rest of their lives. But if you think of the lower down porn stars that aren't at the top of the industry, people at the moment are paying for these parasocial relationships with people on OnlyFans sites, on DMs, where they thank them for jerking off to them. But that's all going to change when you have these perfect AI models that know exactly what to say and how to look. And the truth is that most of these messages aren't real anyway, so what's the difference if people just switch over to the perfect AI and pay for their subscription rather than an imperfect human? Even just thinking with my production brain on and someone who's been on loads of shoots, not those kinds of shoots, as a videographer, I'm thinking now, like, what's the point in flying over an entitled porn star on a private jet, renting them a big mansion, paying for a film crew, sound team, lighting, equipment rental, post-production editing, color grading, sound editing, all the various risk assessments that probably go into shooting a porno, I don't know. What's the point in spending all that money instead of just hiring one editor who's really well-versed in AI to make this perfect, profitable girl or boy? Like, for sure, this is going to take over the industry and I really worry for anyone who's getting into this trade now because they think it's empowering or cool. It's also interesting just thinking about what people get held up at the top of society in each era. So if you think of ancient Greece, it was the philosophers, the big thinkers, the gladiators that risked their lives and trained for years. Now, in modern times, it's people that get railed by the most amount of people. So that's the sad truth. All these people on OnlyFans that are aspiring millionaires or celebrities are going to get pushed lower and lower down in value until people are selling their balls for the price of a Mars bar. And this backs up the point that this isn't a sustainable career. If you look at people who have been at the top of the game, Lana Rhodes, Mia Khalifa, I can't think of any male examples, they all crash and burn. They go on the biggest shoots, get the most money, get the most clout, but 
they still crash out and seem to have these manic episodes of depression because they regret the industry that they went into. And I really hope that this video doesn't come across as me trying to embarrass these girls and also doesn't come across as me explicitly picking on girls and trying to like slut shame them because I'm sure there's loads of male examples out there too that are exploiting like horny in celly girls uh, but it's more just a video to think and reflect on where our culture's at and really examine if this is the way we want to be trending and if it's compassionate to let these people keep on doing what they're doing pushing the boundaries sleeping with a thousand men because it's going to be two thousand men next and then three thousand and how low can we push it down so that they're all 18 and one thousand and before you know it your younger brother has been coerced by his mates into sleeping with some experienced porn star or, or your younger sister has gone to some event with some really good looking ex love island celebrity that's sleeping with a thousand young girls i mean that actually just fucking makes my blood boil even thinking about that but it seems at the moment like it's all going in that direction it's a race to the bottom and it's a test of who can make the most rage baity thing to get more eyeballs on them and get more money. I think a lot of this also stems back to this ever prevalent toxic empathy that we have in 2024 where my generation seems to think that it's virtuous to avoid conflict and telling people that they're doing something wrong and instead just say it's their life they can do what they want when in reality you're not being a good person and you know that you're just saying that to avoid any conflict when deep down you feel that what they're doing could be wrong and I think it's super important that we remember including me that we can be wrong on things and I'm always happy to have my mind changed and that's why when I flag something to my mates that I think they're doing wrong or could be doing better it's always super respectful and it's not me trying to be a smart ass but I think the true friend stands up and says hey mate I think this isn't acceptable what you're doing and they try and change it they don't go oh it's okay that he's doing it it's his body it's his choice it's his mind it's his choice it's her body it's her choice it's his her mind it's her choice got ran through by 101 men and my eyes are still recovering from all the bodily fluids that went in them. How many people have you done in one freshers? This was 158 in Fuck. two weeks. Yeah, I'm sore right now. I was going to say, do you get... Do you think it's okay that men cheat on their wives with you? 100%. Women, they want women rights and they want things equal. But then they're the ones that want the bills to be paid for. They expect their guy to go and earn more money than them. Guys, I'm just really struggling to see how it's empowering whether a man or a woman does this. Like genuinely in the comments, explain to me why this is empowering. Because to me, this is just caving into your desires, your animalistic tendencies, rather than actually building something of value in your life. Do you think these people ever get messages that someone like David Goggins or Chris Bumpstead gets saying, you changed my life or that you stopped me from committing suicide. Like, I'm sure these creators actually get less messages than they should do from their fans because a lot of them end up committing suicide because they keep on falling down this train of having no purpose in life, feeling worthless and ashamed every time when they get post not clarity after this. Free, like I was already being such a well, that free, so I was like, I may as well get paid for it. But I had a boyfriend at the time and then he was like, I did ask him, I said, what would you do if I did OnlyFans? He was like, no. So he binned him well, he off. said no? Yeah, he oh said no. God. He said yeah, no. Get him in the so, <laughs> get him gone. Great. So she had a boyfriend. Everything was going well. She asked if she could do OnlyFans and he said no. So she binned her off. So to conclude, if your content relates to anything I've discussed in this video, whether you're Lily Phillips, Bonnie Blue or some other male creator, maybe, I would love to speak to you because... I'm just baffled why any of this is justified. I'd actually respect it if these people came out and said, look, I'm self-centered. I don't give a fuck about anyone else. I'm doing my thing because it benefits me. But they're not. This is often hidden in this mask of empowerment and being a dickhead if you speak up against it when actually these people are creating genuine harm, in my opinion, to other people. And we're going to see the ramifications of these actions down the line when all these guys aren't able to have sex with other girls properly because they've had this almost like semi-traumatic experience that they didn't realize was going to be so horrible at the time but they look back on it and that was their introduction to sex i mean you see these people speaking about how they love taking people's virginities like this doesn't excuse them doing it like they've consented to this they've signed forms they've gone through the effort of queuing up with 30 other boys and maybe to some of them it's not that deep maybe they just enjoyed the shag but 
something really just feels morally fishy with this and also a whole other discussion that i haven't even gotten into is seeing this shit on twitter every other post i actually got told that on my panel at battle of ideas i was complaining about the fact that porn is everywhere on twitter and afterwards andrew gold said to me i was going to say live that you do realize that what you see on twitter is reflective of what you watch and i was like yeah you should have said that because that would have been funny but like i literally never go on twitter and i still get this shit so it is everywhere i've seen people of every single age range from fucking 60 to 20 complaining that there's just porn everywhere and um, i think it's like genuinely probably rewiring us to just be desensitized to seeing someone getting fucking gangbang by 23 cocks it's it's not how i think we're wired to be it's probably affecting our relationships and you see the stats we all know them about sexless men lack of connection lack of relationships and i've gotten a lot of comments on my other videos saying like why are we pressuring young people into having relationships at such a young age like they should have fun i completely agree with that like i'm 19 and i want to have fun but at the same time whilst i'm having fun i'm always seeking that deeper connection i'm always open to having a long-term girlfriend if i find the right person for me because i know that that's what's most valuable and what's going to give me the biggest sense of purpose and satisfaction building something long term whether it's a girlfriend building your life with her whether it's building a business building shit not just having sex for views and poisoning western civilization as a whole